What's going on, BOFers? Peter Vera here with a very special guest, all thanks to Batman on Phil's 20th anniversary, legendary producer Michael Uslin. Michael, thank you for joining us today. It is my great pleasure, Peter. Thanks for coming. Uh, just quick questions. How did you go about getting the rights to Batman? What, were, what are the rights? What was the process into getting a live-action series Batman on, on film? Well, you know, to try to explain this story today seems like impossible. It's a science fiction tale. It could never happen in real life. Had as a kid, and I was basically still a kid in my 20s, as a kid in his 20s, buy the rights to Batman. How could that possibly ever happen? And of course, in the world today, it could never possibly happen. So I have to take you back and set it all in the context of the times. Back in the late 1970s, um, the feeling generally in Hollywood and even in the publishing industry, that the only property, the only comic book property capable of sustaining a blockbuster movie was Batman. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, Superman. See, I'm just so into Batman, it just comes out naturally. With Superman, nothing else they felt had any value. Not any of the Marvel stuff. They felt Batman had had his shot on TV back in the 60s, and that was over and done with. And um, the powers that be at the studios, really at that moment in time, did not have the greatest of respect for comic books, comic book characters, and comic book creators. So um, for me, it was that moment in time where my partner Ben Melnicker and I were able to raise some money privately, go to DC Comics, and you have to understand also in the terms of this story, the president of DC Comics at that moment was a wonderful man named Saul Harrison. Saul was, um, he actually worked on the color separation of Famous Funnies number one. So he was there right at the inception and beginning of the comic book business as we know it. And it was Saul who had mentored me into the comic book business when I was an undergrad at Indiana University. I had begun teaching what became the world's first mm -hmm. ever college accredited course on comic books. And Saul read about me in the newspaper, saw me on a TV talk show, and called me and flew me to New York and said DC Comics would love to find a way to work with me. They thought I was a very innovative young man. So um, he brought me into DC Comics and he knew how serious I was and that I was a comic book historian and that I loved and cared about Batman and the creators and the company. So ultimately, Saul felt secure that I would do everything possible to find the way to present the image that I wanted, which was the dark and serious Batman. The Batman created 1939 by Bob Kane and Bill Finger as the creature of the night stalking deeply disturbed criminals from the shadows. So that was, um, that was really part of it. When I finally came to him and said, Saul, this was like four years after I had started working with him, or a few years after, um, I said, I want to buy the rights to Batman and show the world what the true Batman is like the way he was originally created. His reaction was horror. He says, Michael, for God's sake, I don't want to see you lose all your money. Don't you understand that since Batman went off the air on TV, the brand is as dead as a dodo? He says, Michael, nobody's interested in Batman anymore. And I said, but Saul, if I could show the world a different version of it, a dark and serious Batman, there's never been a comic book movie or a superhero movie done dark and seriously. It'll almost be like a new form of entertainment. And he said, is there any way I can talk you out of this? And I said, mm, no. He says, all right, schmoozle, come on in. And that began for Ben and me, a six month negotiation, which gave us enough time to raise the money we needed. And then on October 3rd, 1979, we formed Bat Film Productions and we acquired the rights to Batman and it, it's the motion picture and allied rights, you know, when we talk about the rights to Batman. Um, so the real story, Peter, and the only way I can put it is in answer to that question, how does a kid in his 20s buy the rights to Batman, is simply a very unglamorous answer. Nobody else in the world showed up. Nobody else in the world was interested or wanted Batman. That's how I got it.